bring in Eli Manning, who joins us on the program. Were you recruited by Crappensburg State? I didn't get a letter from them, unfortunately. <laughs> but it would have been a strong consideration, though. Um, when you look back on recruiting, was there anything that stood out that was like interesting, different, bizarre? Um, well, you know, Mike Leach was at Kentucky and he was the one that, um, recruited me hard. And honestly, I'd be on the phone. I wouldn't say a word for an hour. Like he would just go <laughs> and he would just, I mean, he was no different than what he was. All his coaches got rest his soul, but just one of the great personalities. And he, he could talk like no one I've ever seen. I'd be, I'd be like looking at my dad, like, I got to get off the phone. I got some homework to do. Like I got some stuff to do. I can't get a word in. Um, but he was, uh, he was, he was always interesting kind of going on his, on his spats about who knows what, but how close was it that you were going to go to Kentucky? Um, you know, they were, they were throwing it around and it was how mommy and, and they, you know, Tim Couch was, you know, in the mix and they were, they were kind of having some upset. So if you wanted to go throw it around and do the spread offense and, and have some fun. That was a spot. So I don't. I don't know if it was. You know, it wasn't totally uh, outside the mix, but it wasn't. It wasn't in the top ten. If you were coming out now, what would intrigue you? Where would intrigue you? I mean, I think. Uh, I think there's a lot of a lot of schools that are intriguing. I mean, obviously, I mean Georgia, Alabama are always in the mix in in the SEC. Ole Miss, you know, Lane Kiffin, they're throwing it. They're you know putting up a lot of points offensively. Ohio State's always in the mix. I mean, you kind of look at the top teams um, consistently. I think those are always popular. But I think it's still important for for players to hey look at who's the offensive coordinator, who's the quarterback coach, who's the head coach, uh, what what's the vibe of of the team and the closeness of everybody. So I think it's it's really about you know taking those visits being around the players, being around the coaches, and where do you feel comfortable? Where do you feel, hey, I'm going to fit in here. I'm going to be happy here. And also look at the university. I, I think it was important to me, and I think it was because I had an older brother, Cooper, who went to play college football and got injured and never played a down. I said, hey, I want to pick a school where if something happens and I never play one down of football, I'm going to be happy here, and I'm going to stay here, and this is where I want to be. And now I don't know if that's that's going into any consideration with with uh with guys now and and or any any you know athlete is where they pick their school it's uh nil and it's you know it's so easy to transfer i don't know if that's a that's a part of their decision making what's the biggest mistake we make or analysts make looking at a college quarterback when he goes to the nfl that we see success in college but what do we miss out on most do you think um i think it's i think it's just it's got to be you know, how, how, you know, how is the guy getting the ball out, um, you know, on time in rhythm. And I think that's something that it doesn't, you know, it doesn't, it's hard to see that in college. Like, Hey, how many times is he, you know, not looking at the right place going, you know, looking at the wrong read. Hey, he can scramble, he can create plays, but he's holding it, you know, for four seconds and got the ball, got the completion that just doesn't happen in the NFL. I think it's, you know, looking, hey, is this guy getting the ball out on time, in rhythm, throwing the ball accurately into, you know, on on time is is just so important. And I think it's hard to hard to get a sense of that in college. You 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 can hold the ball longer. It's hard to get pressure on the quarterback unless they're blitzing. With a four-man rush, you know, the quarterback can sit back there three and a half seconds. And that just that doesn't happen in the NFL. He's Eli Manning, two time Super Bowl champ. Uh, do we want to play guess Eli Manning's middle name? We could play that. Okay. Every, around the room, you want to go first or last? Uh, Todd, time? you go first. Dabney. Dabney. <laughs> okay. okay. All right. Seaton. Uh, I'm, 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 I'm going to say Whitney. Whitney. Oh. Eli Whitney. Eli Whitney. There okay. you go. I like oh, I like, I like that. All right. I like it. Marvin? I'm going to go Nathaniel. Nathaniel. Okay. Strong. Paulie? I know it, so, okay. but I can give you a hint, Dan, before you guess. His older brother, Peyton, his middle name is Williams. Okay, I was going to go Winston. Ooh, Eli Winston. Winston Manning Jr. the <laughs> third. What is so it? I, I, it's Nelson. Nathaniel is close. Nelson, uh, which is a family name named after kind of one of my, my uncles. Hmm. Uh, so, yeah, Elijah, okay. Elijah Nelson Manning. Strong name. 
Uh, you're joining us on behalf of uh, Quaker, their uh, pre-green tour. I'll let you give the pitch here. Yeah, that's uh, kicking off the first ever Quaker pre-grain tour. If you don't know what pre-graining is, it's basically you just start your pre-game with some Quaker oats, which I did every day and, and still do. And so basically, this is a tailgate that's visiting NFL stadiums throughout this year. They've had a few, got a few more, and they're introducing their new digital Quaker playbook, which is 32 recipes representing all the NFL teams. And that tour will end at the Super Bowl taste of the NFL. Well, they'll announce a $250,000 uh, donation to Quaker's longtime partner, Gin Youth, uh, which is a, a youth wellness uh, nutrition organization, nonprofit. And so it's really about what Quaker's doing and understanding that the circumstances of life should not be a barrier for good nutrition. So it's uh, great to team up with them, have a little fun, do some tailgating. And, you know, learn some dis different recipes for uh, using uh, Quaker Oats. Peyton uh, famously had Omaha, Omaha. Did you feel like you had to be creative at all with any of your audible calls? Well, first off, I, I think we got to set the record straight where I used Omaha way before Peyton ever used oh, it. Wow. He stole it. Wow, he that's breaking it. news. It is breaking news. So that's intellectual property that he stole from you. Yes, exactly. It was in our playbook. It was a word. Uh, he used it the exact same way. And I, but I have to be a little honest. I, not me personally, but um, my rookie season, uh, uh, John Huffnagel is our offensive coordinator. He come from New England and he brought it from New England. So I stole it technically from Tom Brady. We used it for a long time. <laughs> And then 2000, I guess, 15-ish, I think that's the year. They must have really turned up the microphones yeah. on the quarterback. They put the speaker, they put the recording on, on our jersey so you could hear everything the quarterback was saying. And, and Peyton played a playoff game, and he must have sent Omaha 85 times in the game. And it just, you know, everybody's like, what is going on? What is the big deal about Omaha? He's getting free stakes out of this he's got a key to the city he's got a production company named after it and like he i get nothing he didn't even send me a stake i don't get i get nothing from him. no no credit whatsoever when do you know that you've pressed the button maybe too strongly with peyton like you'll you'll jab but when do you know that you cross the line when he doesn't respond he just kind of like he, he kind of just goes quiet and just kind of shakes his head a little bit like hey that's off limits. Don't go. Don't don't keep going. Don't harp on that. Don't expand on that. Like you're 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 in you're in dangerous territory. <laughs> you know, retreat a little bit. Retreat. So when he, he kind of just he does not, you know, respond to it. That's the, when, the forehead gets red. I think when <laughs> that's kind of all. Yeah, yeah. it's kind of always the case. <laughs> that's a I big mean, forehead. It is. It is. When the vein, the vein starts coming in the neck and like on the side of the forehead right there. Yeah. It's like, it's, that's, that's more clock management it's, uh, situations on the opposing team or one of the teams. That's, that's when the vein clock management is his number one pet peeve. If I were to ever say, I don't think Peyton had good clock management as a quarterback. I think he would, he would burst into, you know, flames uh great to talk to you good luck with a quaker pre-green tour he's eli nelson manning the third elijah elijah nelson uh, elijah nelson manning Man. jr the third good Perfect. to talk to you eli thank you thanks dan all right eli manning there